Welcome to the EKG Guy. If this is your first time, welcome, and I'm glad you're joining us. And if those of you that are returning, welcome back. So we're going now through our EKG coding reference guide, which is made available online if you have access. Okay, if not, what you want to do is put this URL into your search bar. Okay, and you'll come to that page. What you'll do is enter your email address here. You'll click submit. You'll check your email. And in your email, you'll get a link. And then from there, you'll get to this, or the EKG coding reference guide, okay? Now, if you're returning, you could do that same if it's not opened and you'll bypass this whole first step, okay? So that's only the first time. So we've made it through the general features, part one. So you can go back and listen to those lectures or uh, go through it on your own if you'd like. Now we're in this rhythm section, okay? And what we'll be looking here specifically is at sinus tachycardia, okay? So that's what we're at now, okay? So we're gonna make our way through this. If you're interested in our course, obviously you can go to our site, www.ekg.md, and then go to the course, okay, for more resources. All right, so let's get started here. So sinus tachycardia. So sinus tachycardia means that, as the name implies, is that sinus rhythm is present, okay? So we have a sinus rhythm, but it's at a fast rate, over 100 beats per minute in adults, okay? Or above the normal uh, range for the child at that age, okay? So children tend to have a little faster rates, so above the upper limit of normal is considered tachycardic. Now, mostly we deal with adults, so we'll focus on above 100 beats per minute, okay? So sinus tachycardia. So because it's sinus tachycardia and the first portion is means that we have a sinus rhythm, so it's pretty much a sinus rhythm plus a rate over 100 beats per minute, okay? So that's pretty much the definition and that's sinus tachycardia, okay? And so we're looking, we have to first ensure that we have sinus rhythm present, okay? And we went through that whole lecture of how to identify sinus rhythm. Okay, as you can see, we'll do it here, but more specifically in that lecture, we looked at why we see what we see. So if you're not sure and you really want to understand why we see what we see in sinus rhythm, I would highly recommend going back to that. Okay, and I think that'll stick in your mind. So go to the lecture where we discuss that sinus rhythm. Now, so let's look at here. So sinus rhythm, okay, and is we want to look at P waves, and that's pretty much the main thing. We're looking at P waves and atrial rate. And the atrial rate comes by looking at the P wave. So really, we're looking at an atrial rate greater than 100 beats per minute, not a ventricular rate. So that's important. So a sinus rhythm with an atrial rate over 100 beats per minute. So let's look here. Do we have sinus rhythm present? Well, we have a normal axis, okay? And what we mean by normal axis is it be lies between that zero here, okay, zero degrees, and that positive 75 degrees in this region. Okay, different from the ventricular axis. This is that P wave axis. And we see upright P waves here in lead one. We see them in lead two. We can even see them in lead three, these lateral precordial leads. And then remember, they're inverted in lead AVR. Okay, so that's one thing you want to see. So that's where we get that axis and some of those findings. Okay, but to understand why we see those upright P waves and inverted P waves, make sure you go back and listen to that lecture. I think you'll find it quite helpful. The other thing is we want to ensure that the P waves have the same morphology. And the best way to do it is looking at one of your rhythm strips. So you can look at lead two or V5 here. Look at all these P waves all look the same throughout. Okay, so you want to see that the same thing. And because of that, you'll also have similar PR intervals if there's no drop beats, but we're looking for same P wave morphology. Okay, so P waves are what we focus on. And then the main thing in this case that separates it from normal sinus rhythm or sinus bradycardia is that atrial rate over 100 beats per minute. Okay, so let's work to find that rate here. So there's a few ways we can find that here. So we know that, just to review, from beginning to end of our standard 12 lead ECG, which is this, is 10 seconds. So it's a 10 second strip times six is 60 seconds, which you know equals one minute, okay? So what you wanna do when finding the atrial rate, which is what we need to do, is you want to count the number of P waves 
multiply that by six and it'll give you an estimate in beats per minute okay so you can do this for both regular and irregular rhythm so let's do this one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen 16 and there's one here 17 so 17 and you know that 17 times 6 is going to come out to 102 so as you can see that is above the 100 beats per minute range all right and you can ensure because we know that there's one p wave for one qrs you can actually look at the ventricular rate okay if you looked here and see this next one here it's actually within that so if you wanted to confirm the ventricular rate is also similar and within uh, the three boxes so if you look at this one here to this one you can see that this point is right before so one two three less than three so 300 over three okay is 100 but it's a little less than that so it's going to be greater than 100 so that's the ventricular rate you could do that similarly with the p waves okay if you look at maybe this p wave here that falls on one of the thick lines and find the next one you could see that it's within that range okay so you would do 300 divided by the number of thick lines which is one two three and a little less than that to get that okay but over 100 beats per minute because it's within that okay so a few ways you can find it i think that first way is always an easy sure way to do it okay this one here that we looked at and multiply that by six and we saw the rates over 100 beats per minute okay because you can use that way with both regular and irregular rhythms which is helpful so again just to recap this is sinus rhythm okay with a rate over 100 beats per minute okay so look for those p waves make sure you have sinus rhythm present go back to that lecture if you want to understand why we see what we see in sinus rhythm okay in the normal conduction system and then we want an atrial rate so it's that atrial rate over 100 beats per minute all right so hopefully that makes sense that's the end of this lecture i hope you learned something now just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available so again if you go to our website www.ekg.md okay so this is our website and what you'll notice is that if you go to the ekg course here okay you'll find stuff that's separate so notice that we have a number of topics practice material lectures a way for you to contribute and this is the course here over here so you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so and that's more on youtube there's another hundred more than 100 about 200 videos that are available with the course so those are separate videos and this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter okay so completely separate from what you're getting online for free okay these are um, course material that comes with it so notice that you have a book okay and then you also have the pocket guide available so you can choose which format they are the same thing both these uh, book and the pocket guide uh, different formats uh, I really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go now with the book you also get videos so notice these are the videos okay and these are a video for every single page in that book so it's over 30 hours of video now there's a number of practice material that i continue to upload there okay we'll have practice questions coming soon uh, so all of that's available again this is separate from all the free material that you get already okay so this is more high yield stuff this is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at mayo clinic and it's used now among many institutions so use uh, check that out now what it also includes are calipers so yes you get calipers with this course okay um i don't know anyone else that offers that but you do get calipers i think they're very helpful and they can uh you know if you know how to use them correctly uh can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on okay and then you also get our pocket ekg reference okay this was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows uh, and this is really nice it has every code as you saw earlier laid out there very small pocket guide available 
I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic in editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the EKG course. You'll see examples of lectures, okay, why we developed this, okay. A lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and, you know, still struggling. So uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them, okay. You can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough, okay. And you find yourself using other resources, which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself um, 25% off that will even, it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right. Have a great day.